Доброго дня, друзі. Greetings, friends. We provide another daily briefing regarding the dispelling of Russian propaganda and fakes that they are spreading around the world. The whole world was appalled by the evidence of the bloodshed in Bucha. The motive of peaceful civilians are the evidence of war crimes that have become the part of humanity heritage. And Russia tries to avoid responsibility for this. You have heard their version of events, that all of this was staged, and that corpses on the roads were in fact crisis actors, moving their arms and legs about after the cameras have drawn past them. After this fake was disregarded, they insisted that Ukrainians themselves kill those civilians. Now to support this narrative they use their agent in other states, in particular in America. As an example, on Russian propaganda media Russian Today, a video was published with an interview of a person that was Russia's narrative around the world. He said that this was an operation carried out by Azov, that this was a false flag operation. We're talking about an ex-employee of the Pentagon, Michael Maluf, that in fact for the number of years enjoyed close working relations with Russian state propaganda machine. To support the party line that Ukraine is to blame for murders of civilians, in Bucha he stated, quote, the fact of murders of civilians in Bucha should be investigated by the UN. Why was this stated? To see doubt on the trustful recollection of the events presented that have shocked the world. If we would try to find out who is this Michael Malov, he is a radical right-winger with ties to publication Walnet Daily. Before that, he worked as an analytic for a controversial department of the Pentagon, the Office of Special Plans, that, among other things, provided wrongful intelligence to justification of military intervention in Iraq. In December of 2001, he was deprived of his security access and went on indefinite vacation for his tie to Iran a Lebanese businessman that was implicated in illegal weapon sales to Africa in another hotspot of Liberia. There is no trust for such experts, but Russia is not picky. All they need is a foreign sounding name, as they already did with their fake about chemical weapons that allegedly Ukraine was developing. It all the same here. They try to convince anyone they can of this conspiracy theory by using fake speakers. But I am convinced the world will not buy this lie. Let us talk about the next example of Russian propaganda, the attempt of Chechen fighters to hand out humanitarian aid in Mariupol, the city that is being besieged and where Russia caused humanitarian catastrophe. What's catching the eye? The fact that humanitarian aid in question consists of flour and said flour is contained in Ukrainian packaging. Right there the world that is written on packaging is not muka, that would have been the case if it was delivered from Russia, but borishna of Ukrainian producer. What does this mean? This means that in fact Russian aggressors either rob the warehouse with Ukrainian produce or the store and then what they have marauded they now hand out to people as a humanitarian aid from Russia to appease poor people that are still residing in Mariupol despite these terrible circumstances. Another fake that could have been seen in recent times is a complete madness that is being posted by Russian stock propagandist Solovyov. So he reports that due to alleged ban in Ukrainian of Latin letters V and Z, symbols of Russian invasion, now the name and surname of Vladimir Zelensky is being written using W and S. He also attached illustrations supporting this fake. The problem is, this image was pulled from German broadcast, and in German the name and surname of Vladimir Zelensky is written using W and S, because this is how German spelling works. And the last fake for today is the attempts by Russia to show that there is a support for their actions on the territory of Ukraine that the world is sympathetic towards Russia and that Russia is a victim of these circumstances. For this, they set animosity towards Russians around the world. They use fake demonstrations and rallies, auto rallies as was the case in Berlin and small number of their admirals in Athens. But of course, after they hold any sort of gathering, they try to play the violence on Russians' card. Specifically, they report that during the rally in Athens, there was an attack on a seven-year-old girl by Ukrainians. Yet another story about the crucified boy. Before that, they spread the fact that in Germany, alleging that a Russian-speaking boy was attacked by Ukrainian nationalists. 
called in Athens during the auto rally for peace, Russia and Greece, the group of Ukrainians have beaten seven-year-old girl. They have blocked a road by two cars and then grabbed the Russian flag from the hands of my daughter and hit her with a flagpole. Of course, no confirmation from the police, local human rights organizations, there are no such confirmations, they are fakes. Being created on purpose without citing names, but just eyewitnesses and gossip was a singular purpose to invoke at least a little bit sympathy for Russians during the aggression of Russia against Ukraine. And of course, except Russians, no one buys this lie. Friends, we keep discussing and dispelling fakes. So keep calm, think critically, trust Ukrainian armed forces, Ukrainian media and Ukrainian political leadership. All will be well.